Good morning. Well, I know that most of y'all are just here, or some of y'all are probably just here for the recipe, but we're going to make coffee first. And then we'll do the recipe, and then we'll see what's going on with the rest of the day, and we'll just talk a little bit. But first, we're going to get me a cup of coffee made. Would you like a little coffee with that cream, please? <laughs> yes, please. That's the way I like it. Lots of cream, heavy cream. Um, not able to get to my beautiful friends to get some fresh milk here. Been a while, so been having to to do without that really really good cream. So I had to use store-bought. <laughs> Tina, one of these days I'm going to get to you. Get me some more milk. I promise. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it is trying to rain. And I was going to get up this morning real early. Um, I'm not going into school today. We're still on break. Um, and y'all probably been wondering where we've been. We got uh, another project going on, and I've just about got it whooped. So when I get it completely done and everything the way it needs to be, I'll be I'll be showing it to you. So that's what we've been working on, and it's a very important project for me because it's something that I've been needing for a long time, and um, it, it wasn't something just uh, just to go and spend money on it. It's something that we need here in our home so that helps us kind of be sustainable put it that way and just something that this is a small home and we love this house um, it's just me and Danny and um, I just love living in this little house but there's just some priorities that need to be made a few things changes so uh, that's what we've been working on and we are going to be sharing that with you um, I was going to get up early. I've been getting up early and going out and watering my plants and flowers just pretty much every morning. Um, the heat has been so intense, and a lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. And um, it's just really doing a number on everything. Uh, we still got um, peas coming, our Red Ripper peas or cow peas, whatever you want, you choose to call them. Um, tomatoes, cucumbers. The reason my cucumbers are still okay is because they're not directly just right out in the intense sun. So, I mean, the leaves are getting kind of dry <clears throat> and, and kind of crispy feeling. And I'm thinking, oh no, but it's still putting on some cucumbers any day. Um, I thought about going ahead and replanting them for this fall, and I may still do that, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I've got my fill of cucumbers, and, and I'm the only one that really loves the cucumbers. I eat them fresh, and then I've also made another big jar of refrigerator pickles, so me and Mr. Brown are good on that. 
I've got a video on that and they're bread and butter and some of y'all are wanting recipe for the dill um, I guess the reason I haven't made any yet is because we prefer the bread and butter we're not we're just not big pickle eaters we do love dill pickle relish but my favorite on a hot dog and in my potato salad and stuff is still sweet relish and I guess it's everybody to their own taste so anyways um, our squash is done and um, we just ate the squash as it come off uh, I did put zucchini in the freezer I did shred that up for different recipes but they're just burned up and not only they burned up but I've had an awful time with squash bugs this year I mean I always had to fight them but this year has been unreal I don't know the difference um, I do know that squash bugs do like hot intense heat they like it when your soil is just dried out pretty much I did replant some more pumpkins and I'm hoping that I've been really watching them and uh, hoping that maybe I can get some more pumpkins uh, during the fall uh, unless we have a very early cold winter I think I'll I'll be okay but uh, we got the potatoes they're 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 pretty much cured now we cured them and I need to get them in the some of them in the freezer and some of them canned and then I'll leave some of them just like they are um, <clears throat> let's see the chickens got so hot that there was only a couple that were laying <laughs> they're saying this is just too hot and I don't blame them but I think the last couple of days uh, Danny's gotten several eggs so some of them's uh, of course it was uh, last couple of days just been in the low 90s instead of way up in the hundreds so maybe a couple of them decide they go ahead and lay us an egg and usually we don't have that problem during summertime but that's how hot it's been um, you know, the, the other day we was talking about on our question and answer video, and I didn't mean it to, to, to make fun or anything, but when I had a comment telling us that it was so hot in Arizona that the cactus were dying, and, and that's awful. That's, it's awful that it's that hot. And, uh, but it just sounded funny to me that it's so hot that the cactus are dying in Arizona, and that, that's awful, but it was just funny so I wasn't making fun <laughs> I wasn't making fun of it. it just you know you don't hear that very often but it is hot everywhere y'all so just do the best you can with your garden um, some rains trying to come in and I looked at the radar and I think more's coming so I may not have to go out there and use the well water if it don't come on in I'll have to go out there this afternoon. I'll have to go ahead and water everything. But I'm just trying to wait and see how much rain we get before I get out there and turn that well on again, let it run. But um, y'all seen, I showed y'all my little hydroponic system there. And um, growing lettuce, a little bit of lettuce, you know, if you need a sandwich or something, and or you just need a little salad, and then, of course, growing all your herbs right there. You have fresh herbs in your house. Some of y'all live in apartments and to have something like that. And it was very easy to use, put together. And, I mean, everything that I planted in the little cells come up. <clears throat> um, and, like, right now, I could go over there and I could get make me a little salad. Um if I'm making something I need some basil I got my basil I've got some cilantro I got a little bit of parsley my chives are taking a while to grow and I did plant some celery and, and of course celery does take a while I may have to kind of thin them out though <clears throat> but I mean that's what I started and the chives I should wish I'd have planted more chives in it but you know that was my first time so next time I'm kind of wanting to order me another one and put nothing but herbs in it and then um, maybe as time goes on I might plant one with nothing but the lettuce and one with herbs and I think that would be great so I'm not this is not a review or nothing like that on this um, 
there's different kinds on Amazon that you can look at. I will put this one, if it's not already, it may be either in my garden part of my store or it could be, who knows, sometimes I put so much in the pantry part of my store. I need to go in there and really clean that store up, but I just don't have time. I just, most of the time, when I see something that I'm using or that I have bought or I think that y'all might like, <clears throat> I'll just uh, put it there in the store. But anyways, um, Danny, like he's at, he's at work. I'm hoping it's gonna rain. Um, I've got bread made. I don't need to make no bread today, but I am gonna continue working on my project. And I wanna get that done pretty quick. But I wanna sit down and let's just talk a little bit. Um, I wanna start doing, so when y'all, I've got so many books, I wanna start sharing them with y'all. And, uh, cause I know a lot of y'all love looking through books like I do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get our sugar-free, healthier little dessert made. You know, it's so hot outside, and if you are like me and Mr. Brown, we don't really want anything really heavy. I've got some Cool Whip here, it's, it's zero sugar. Um, it says right here that it only stays fresh in the refrigerator for two weeks. But you can make your own with some heavy cream. And not you can uh, not add no sugar to it, but just add your sugar substitute. But I wanted to, I, when I seen this, I went ahead and got it because I wanted, some of y'all may not know that it's out there that, that like to use Cool Whip as a, uh, as something fast to whip up a dessert instead of having to make your, your own out of heavy cream, which is what I prefer. But I did see this and I wanted to show it to y'all. Then I've got some Greek yogurt, strawberry. You can use any any flavor that you want. Strawberry, cherry, um, lime, just lemon, whatever kind that you prefer. And then I've got some uh, sugar-free strawberry gelatin. Now if you don't want this sugar-free, just use your yogurt and regular whipped cream or regular Cool Whip and just your regular strawberry gelatin that your children and grandkids would love this if uh, if you're watching their sugar make it all as much as you can a sugar free and it's really easy and it tastes so good and like i said you can use any any kind of flavors of yogurt strawberry gelatin uh, to make up your own little flavors there but this is strawberry greek yogurt I usually always keep strawberry because usually if I've got grandkids here that like the yogurt, that's usually what they like. I'm just going to stir that up. For y'all that are uh, new to my channel, oh, thank you so much for subscribing and spending time with me and Danny, aka Mr. Brown. We love it. We're so glad you're here. This is a Tobolo. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've got these um, in my Amazon store. And um, I just love these. I've got different sizes, but you can use these things for everything. You use both, both ends for different uses. I'm going to take... This is a... Great value, sugar-free strawberry gelatin. It is uh, 0 0.3 ounce. And it's just to, to give your, your little dessert just a little more oomph to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put half of this 3-ounce pack. That way, you can use the other half next time you make it. And you won't have to buy you another box of gelatin. 
I'm going to stir this up just a little bit. Now, if you taste it and you think you want the whole package of, of uh, gelatin in it, go ahead and add it after you put your pull with, uh, in there. But I always just put half. And I'm not even going to use all of this. I'm going to try about a cup and a half. Of your whipped cream or your your cool whip whichever whichever you're using my cousin Julie in Texas she makes a pie and y'all seen me do that video it's probably one of my first videos and she done it with peach and she put it in a uh, graham cracker crust and it's just a cool refreshing dessert to have in the summertime it's a good way to get your yogurt Some people like me don't care to sit down and eat a lot of yogurt and it's good for you. So this is a good way to get even kids that are finicky about eating yogurt. This is a good way to do it and do it all sugar free. I'm going to taste it. Tastes pretty good. Now the fact that this is all of it uh, sugar free the gelatin and the Cool Whip, so it's it's just not going to be real sweet. So you got to be prepared for that. But it's a really good, really really good dessert. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in. Y'all remember when I I've started doing cooking for two, and I'm going to continue doing it too. Um. I went to the flea market and, and I'm just wanting some little containers for me and Mr. Brown so I can just make a few little desserts. And I found these at the flea market and these are so pretty. I paid a dollar for this one. I paid a dollar for this one and they're they're heavy, they're not light. And they're so pretty. And I paid two dollars for this one. So I got three really pretty little dishes for four dollars. And that's all we need right there. So you really don't need to go online or anywhere and spend a bunch of money. If if you can, if you're able to go to flea markets and little yard sales and stuff, you can pick up stuff like this to make your little desserts in. Cooking for two desserts. This is a really good consistency, and I think we're gonna stop right here. Now, I don't have any fresh strawberries. I wish I did because I'd cut some up and put it on the very top. But I just want to show y'all and share this little dessert with y'all because you can do it with so many different flavors and it's such a good, uh, refreshing dessert. And it's just enough for two. Or if you didn't want to make them, you know, this much, you could probably get three. Put you a couple little strawberries on top. If you want to do the peach, you could cut you a peach up. Put you a couple little slices of, of peach on top. You could do lime. I mean, sky's the limit. And a lot of y'all happen to watch your sugar, especially. And, uh, This is just a wonderful dessert. To do that with. I wish I could make this prettier for y'all. Like I said, I have not been to the grocery store to get, excuse me, to get strawberries. So there we go. We got our pretty little sugar-free, refreshing, summertime dessert for two.
cantaloupe out of the garden turned out sweet. My hydroponic uh, little system here has done really good. It grew lettuce and uh, basil and chives and parsley and cilantro and it's even growing celery. It's done a really good job. And I'll put it down in the description box uh, in my Amazon store. Uh, I bought this myself. It's not a review and it really does work. And I'm probably going to buy me another one to plant probably just herbs. Hey, we're going to come back to doing something that y'all have really loved with me and Mr. Brown, done it? And I don't know why we got away from it. Uh, I, I think, you know, we got on into summertime and things just got so busy. But a lot of y'all loved it when we read uh, out of this book. We had everything but money. So I thought we would continue some of that reading too because I love reading. I love reading these books and uh, I love reading all kinds of books especially recipe books. Um, you know, we had everything but money. That, that is so true. But we, we just didn't think any different, I guess. Um, you know, living there with Grandma and Grandpa and then Danny's family being the same way, and I was with them all the time as a young girl. Um, and the area that I lived in, the little country school that we went to, uh, all the old stores around us, mom and pop stores. Uh, most of the roads that we drove on were still gravel <laughs> at that time until you finally hit the highway. Um, but we didn't consider ourselves anything but normal. We didn't have any luxuries, like I said, and even at one point we used an outhouse because we didn't have an indoor bathroom for a while but finally grandpa was able to get in there and he turned a, a walk through closet he turned it into a bathroom and put a clawfoot beautiful clawfoot bathtub in it and a stand-up shower and uh, i can remember the sink it was one of them sinks that attached to the wall and then uh, the faucets was up on the wall too and the little heater was one of them really old gas heaters that lasted forever. Um, but yeah, uh, just an old farmhouse. It had a uh, closed-in back porch. That's where they stored a lot of stuff. In fact, that's where we took some of our baths before we got a bathroom because Grandma had a wood cook stove just right around the corner in the kitchen. And um, there was a front porch with swing on it, but there was a creek right down the hill from the farmhouse. And that's where we spent most of our time. Um, and Danny can tell you the same thing. We, we had everything and we were so happy. No luxuries. We didn't go out to eat, but maybe once or twice a year and it had to be a special occasion. Um, when we learned to drive, <laughs> I learned to drive a, a, an old, a little big Datsun truck my grandpa had, and it was a standard. So everything that I learned to drive was a standard. Tractor, everything. And um, I just, I felt like we had everything. We did. And there was not any luxuries at all. But you know what? Then were such happy times. So we didn't have money, but we had everything. And that's what this book is about. But it tells a lot of stories, too. So... Y'all that are new to the channel, uh, <clears throat> off and on we, we'd read some of these stories and like I said, we got busy and stopped, but I'm fixing to read another one to you. I'm still hoping the rains are coming. Priceless Memories of the Great Depression. It's by Clancy Strock and the contributing editor well, he's, Clancy Strzok was a contributing editor and of uh, Reminisce magazine. And the book is dedicated to all of our parents and grandparents who refused to be defeated by the Great Depression. And we have read several, several stories out of here. Sometimes it's it's hard to pick. Okay, which ones do we have, do we want to read next? Because they're all so good. 
And then, because I didn't mark all of them, um, I kind of forgot. Which one, all the ones that we have read. So if I repeat myself, I'm sorry. But I know there's, I've got lots of new subscribers too. I think I'm going to start right here. And it's not even Christmas time, but I want to read this. It's this, Depression Christmases meant the most to me. I'm going to kind of turn y'all where y'all might see, maybe see the pictures a little bit. kind of a glare on it if I could go back in time I would love to go back to the depression at Christmas time the times were so hard but our celebrations were always special each year we'd hike out to the timber to select our tree the older boys would cut the tree bring it home and anchor it in a milk pail mama would give us an old white sheet to drape around the pail as the tree skirt then it was time to make our decorations. We'd settle in at the dining room table with the kerosene lamp glowing in the middle. We'd start with paper chains. Y'all remember making paper chains. We used to do that at school all the time and uh, in elementary and take them home to decorate. We'd start with paper chains made from sheets of red and green construction paper we bought for a nickel. We held the strips together with glue made with a little flour and water. Then we'd string up some popcorn. When the tree was decorated, we always thought it was the most beautiful tree ever, even with the smeared paste that showed on our paper chains. The star for the top of the tree was made from cardboard and covered in tin foil. It was lopsided but to a small child's eyes, it was beautiful. I remember one Christmas especially vividly. We were all looking forward to the program at our church. I put on a beautiful red and white dress, complete with matching bloomers that Mama had made for me from flower sacks. When we were all ready, Mama told me that I was going to be the biggest, it was going to be the biggest birthday celebration there ever was. This is called A Wonderful Walk. The walk to church was a beautiful that night. The snow crunched under our feet as we walked and the stars twinkled like fireflies. When we arrived, the church was already full of people. The program started with our pianist playing songs like Silent Night and Come All You Faithful while everyone sang. Then the little ones stood up in the front of the church singing our little hearts out to away in the manger. Then came the nativity scene. Mary wore a halo made of cardboard and tinfoil, and Joseph knelt beside her. The three wise men, their ropes dragging on the floor, gazed down into the manger. I was so enthralled with what I saw this rough homemade crib and the baby Jesus lying atop the straw. After the minister read the Christmas story, the program was over. Just then, bells began ringing outside the church door, and who should walk in but Santa Claus with a big gunny sack full of gifts. We could see a man's pants legs peeking out from below Santa's suit, and some child yelled out, That's my daddy! But I knew it was really Santa. He gave me a little Bible, and it remains one of my most treasured possessions to this day. And that was contributed by Edna R. Hol Holman from Redding, Kansas. Right here, says, Box of Gifts filled kids with wonder. When I was small, one of the best parts of Christmas was waiting for the box our grandmother would send us from Washington, D.C., what joy in waiting for it, and what suspense in trying to open it without our parents knowing. That box was always placed at the foot of our parents' bed, and it was the first thing we saw in the morning and the last thing we saw at night. We would dream about what was inside of it. On Christmas morning, 
when the box was opened. It never contained anything practical. But to our delight, our grandmother made sure we always got something frivolous, something that Depression-era children could just play with and enjoy. That contributor was Warren Love from Fullerton, California. Sweets for Sweetheart. On Christmas Eve, we would all wait in line for a couple hours to get an orange and a box of hard candy from the people who worked at City Hall. One Christmas, when I was waiting in line, I found out that a friend was sweet on me. He stood in line with my family and gave me a box of chocolate-covered cherries. We never had money to buy candy, and those were the best chocolates I had ever eaten. <laughs> that uh, was contributed by Adele Schaefer from Afton, Missouri. Now I want to go on reading this one. It's called, She Found Joy in Helping Others. <coughs> I'm going to get me a drink, y'all. I'm going to move y'all just a little bit. It says, She Found Joy in Helping Others. I shall never forget Christmas 1931, for it was the most memorable one of my life. My family was very fortunate to have enough money for our four-person household. I was a cashier for the gas company, and my father, a retired Army officer, was our town's postmaster. With two jobs and my father's military pension, we had three checks coming in, so we were able to help many who were in need. <clears throat> on this particular Christmas, a friend and I decided to take food and gifts to a poor family over the holidays. I already knew who many of the poor were because they would come to get, get, to get the gas company office and plead with us not to turn off their gas. Even though they couldn't pay their bills, they all kept hoping for some kind of job that would enable them to at least make a small payment towards what they owed. The family my friend and I chose to help hadn't been able to pay for anything, even a dollar towards their gas bill for five months. My superiors had told me that we couldn't keep providing service to them indefinitely. Their gas was to be turned off right after Christmas. My friend and I went out and bought a present for each member of the family. The mother fathered two girls and a boy and wrapped them in colorful paper. We also bought them Christmas tree and decorations, plus a turkey, ham, potatoes, vegetables, cranberries, and uh, Christmas candies for a holiday dinner. We drove up to the family's house on Christmas Eve. All the shades were pulled down tight. Their old car was parked on the side of the house. So we went to the door and rang the bell. No one answered. We kept ringing and finally we saw a child pull a window shade aside to peek at us. When they saw we had presents and tree, they opened the door and let us in. Nothing could have prepared us for what we saw. The house had looked nice from the outside, <clears throat> but inside it was completely bare. There was no furniture in the living room or dining room. The bedrooms contain no beds, only mattresses with bedding on the floors. In the kitchen set a table surrounded by orange crates the family had been using as chairs. The icebox was open and empty. There was no ice, no food was visible anywhere. Tears ran down the mother's cheeks as she helped me unload the groceries we had bought. The father explained that he had sold all the furniture to buy food for his family. Now he had nothing left to, nothing left to sell and no gas for the car. We had no idea they were so destitute. As we walked back to our car, the father walked with us, thanking us over and over as tears streamed down his face. Before a visit, he had sunk deep into depths of despair. My friend and I immediately emptied our pockets of all the money we had and gave it to him. It was only $8, but it was enough to, for him to buy gas, ice, and other things the family needed. 
I told the father to come to my house the day after Christmas. I knew my parents would give him a job doing yard work. Perhaps some of their friends could hire him too. We also promised to ask he, we also we also promised to ask them if they had any extra furniture he could use to start refurnishing his home. With that helping hand, the family got back on its feet. The father turned out to be an excellent at yard work, and he built up a large clientele for himself. That was a wonderful Christmas for me, and it quick, quickly taught me the great joy to be found in helping others. And I have done this every Christmas since then. <coughs> I got tickled in my throat. Don't that make you sit and think, though? <coughs> I mean, really. And I, I have to admit, you know, children nowadays, even back when mine were little, <coughs> we didn't have money, but I always made sure they had things under the tree. Sometimes Danny did have to do extra jobs. He was always working extra jobs, I can tell y'all. He always had two or three or four jobs. And, um... I have seen him sell stuff for Christmas time for them kids to have Christmas. And it wasn't because we didn't work. It was like I've told y'all before, the money just wasn't there. There just wasn't enough money in our area <clears throat> to raise a family, you know. And, uh, well, I mean, you could raise a family. I'm trying to say there just wasn't, the pay was not good. So you always had to have several jobs. The men did. And a lot of men, even like Danny's dad, he had to work off. He worked on the tow boats. He done several different jobs, but he had to work off <clears throat> to make a decent living. A lot of, a lot of the men and women in our area back in the day would have to leave the farm and go up north, and like places like Illinois and places like that, and work because they could go to the factories and work, make their money, and come back home. And uh, that was just the way life. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, you just never know what families are going through. And um, I personally <clears throat> think that Christmas is too commercialized anymore. It's just way, way too much for me anymore. And um, we need to help others. We need to help others regardless if it's Christmas time or not. It just seems like when holidays come around, that's when the people are so <clears throat> despairing and, and they get in depressions because it is a holiday and maybe they just can't even buy a decent holiday dinner for their family. So this is things that we do need to think about. And as these holidays come along, if we have the ability to help others, there's just nothing that makes a person, I mean, <clears throat> you don't do these things to pat yourself on the back. You do these things from your heart <clears throat> because you don't like seeing people in such despair. And that's, I can't. I just can't hardly take it. Um, it's getting harder and harder for me uh, to see these little children at school where I worked in such despair. And um, our school, like a lot of schools, try to help the families and the children out as much as possible. You know, it's not that the schools have the money to just hand out to, to people, but if we're able to people, the teachers and the employees and people in the community get together and um, we donate small gifts for the children that get dispersed around to very low income families. And um, there's always, um, you go into the stores and there'll be your little Christmas trees with <coughs> families' names on it or you can uh, maybe buy a gift card or something where they can buy food and stuff. But there's always something you can do. Um, you know, just take your neighbors. You know that even the elderly, they don't even have to be a, a young family with small children. The elderly, we need to take care of them. 
and that's where I get frustrated because when it comes to our little kids and our elderly, they're just so left behind and it frustrates me. <clears throat> and I've talked about this before. But I don't want this to be uh, a despairing video. I want it to be uplifting. Um, that as, and of course it's just the, you know, August. <laughs> And I'm fixing to put this video out. Y'all can tell how far behind I am because I'm doing a video and fixing to try to upload it. But we're into August now and the holidays are several months away. But it's just something, you know, people have different personalities. You got givers and you got takers. And um, the people that I've been around most of my life... <clears throat> Or even people that I just meet in one day. I can tell you their personality. I can tell you if they're a giver or a taker. How can you tell if you're a giver or a taker? Take one week of your life and, and reflect back on it and every day of that week. Think about what you've done each one of them days. <clears throat> what did them days consist of? And that will pretty much show you if you're a giver or a taker. And that's what I've always tried to reflect on my kids and my grandchildren. Um, be givers from the heart, not to pat, pat yourself on the back um, because you want, be a giver because you want to, because you care, because you love. Um, there's too much taken in this world right now. Take, 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 take. And it's, it's not all about money. It should never all be about money. It should be about the small things. The uh, Listen to someone that needs to talk. Needs to talk about things they're going through or the loss of a loved one or they're just lonely. That's a gift to people. Stop by an elderly's home and just <clears throat> talk. Sit down and talk to them for a while because you know they love to tell stories of their life. Little kids. Every day should not be full of uh, don't do this, don't do that, get out of this, get out of my way. I'm on my phone, you know. <clears throat> it should be teaching them and spending that time with them. So, um, if you're the kind of person that would rather do for others than yourself, then you know you're a big giver. And always, always give your time to the Lord. Uh, study. And uh, that's the first, that's our first giving thing is, is studying and uh, teaching the Word. So, anyways... I'm sorry I didn't have a big recipe today. <laughs> like I said, we got a lot going on, but as soon as we get done, I'll we'll be right back in the, the pace of doing things. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's been so hot and the house has been so hot. I have not been doing a lot of baking, y'all. I've been making my bread in the bread machine. And, it, you know, <clears throat> some people say, well, that's not homemade bread. Yes, it's homemade bread. <laughs> I put all the ingredients in there and... Uh, I didn't exactly stir it or put it in the oven, but it, I did I did bake some homemade bread, especially when you mill your own wheat berries and stuff. It's just so much. And the biggest thing is that you're not turning your oven on. So, of course, when it cools off, Miss Lori loves to bake. So, <laughs> and y'all know I do. And a lot of y'all want some more bread machine recipes and I need to do some more of those. I need to do a little bit of canning. Um, I've not done a lot of canning this summer uh, because I'm just gonna tell y'all the truth. It's just me and Mr. Brown, and I've got enough for me and the kids. <coughs> but <clears throat> I, have been, I have put quite a bit of, in the freezer, like my okra and some squash. I didn't can any squash or zucchini or nothing like that this year. I didn't make any pickled tomatoes or pickled okra because I have a pantry full of it. I didn't, um, <clears throat> I didn't make a bunch of tomato products. 
Uh, we have had some beautiful tomatoes. We've been eating them fresh and giving them to others. I've uh, been making like sauce, homemade salsa and picante sauce and stuff like that. Of course, we eat them every day just about <clears throat> fresh. But uh, I've got so many tomato products in the pantry right now that I just, I don't need them. In my pantry, there's not in, uh, talking about the pantry, um, what I'm doing is, is going to help my pantry issue of being uh, overstocked and not enough room. But anyways, I kind of give kind of give that away, didn't I? But uh, green beans, um, I didn't put any more green beans up. We still have green beans from two years ago. And it's not because we're not eating them. We just don't eat them as much as we used to. And uh, when you've got kids that that either grow their own produce or they go to the farmer's market. Um, so, <clears throat> but um, dehydrating and freezing and I'm fixing to do some canning though. I have got so much jam and jelly in my pantry that we're not gonna be in need for any for several, several years, you know. So that's just something that you have to think about too. And I'd love to do a video on that, but I just, doing a video on that, you're going to offend people, so uh, you have to be careful. But I am going to do a video of how much, you know, how much is enough? How much in your pantry is enough? And that's something that we all need to figure out. Um, um, there's been so much fear mongering going on anymore that I think it just scared people. When I talk about pantry, I talk about my grandma and my mother-in-law's pantry. I don't, we're not preppers. Uh, we just live and they lived and they put in their pantry what they knew their family needed. And so that's the kind of pantry I'm used to. And I'm not going to say that I, um, especially during COVID when everything was just crazy. I did. I did stock up on some stuff that I still got put behind, you know, for hard times. But uh, <clears throat> with my pantry being full as it is, still, you know, putting up a hundred more jars of tomatoes just, it's just not feasible for us. For one thing, I don't have the room. The other thing, it would take us 20 years to eat that many tomatoes. Um, I probably use a jar of tomatoes anymore in the winter time, probably <clears throat> once a week, making either chili or stew or uh, spaghetti, something like that. Um, I have to be careful how many tomato products I eat with my arthritis. So anyways, my pantry is full, um, regardless that I didn't put a ton up this summer. <clears throat> my freezers, I mean, that's the reason that y'all don't see me go to do grocery hauls because Miss Lori, my pantry has been built up over the years and the way I was taught that was from my grandma and my mother-in-law especially because um, she had a big family to feed. But <clears throat> when your pantry's built up, Every year you should not have to put up three, 500 jars because you are eating out of that pantry, but it's still got enough left to get you through for years, for several years. And that's, that's where my pantry is because for so many years I kept it built up. So <clears throat> I don't have to go in there and constantly um, replenish and go to the store. I don't even have to go to the grocery store even every two weeks or nothing like that for pantry items. Uh, the only reason you'll see me go to the store is for <clears throat> dairy products if I'm not able to get fresh milk. Um, produce like apples and um, now in the in the winter time you will see and those of y'all been with me know that I grow a little most of my greens and lettuces in the winter time. So in winter time, 
I'm not even buying that. But in summertime, I have to buy lettuce. Because it's too hot to grow lettuce in the summertime. And your greens right here where we're at. Um, I mean, just, you know, like, I try to grow celery in the wintertime, but everything bolts in the summertime, stuff like celery and stuff, so it's mostly produce that you'll see me buy or dairy products. But anything more than that, Miss Lori just don't ever have grocery hauls. I guess I could start doing grocery hauls on my produce, huh? Because <laughs> I know I even watch some of them. <clears throat> but uh, the ones I like to watch are the frugal ones. The frugal mamas that do the frugal shopping. Now, when my daughters like to go to Aldi's and stuff, and uh, they're very uh, frugal at their grocery buying, I like to go with them and just see if maybe there's something that I could put in the pantry. Um, maybe there's a deal on something or something like that. But as far as uh, corn, green beans, tomatoes, okra squash and i know i'm leaving stuff out i've even put up i cut up a bunch of celery and uh, <clears throat> i like to freeze my celery i put it i vacuum pack it and put it in the freezer for when i need it for cooking um stuff like that but uh, i do need it to do to dehydrate some onions and get them put up and stuff like that. I have all the herbs I'll ever need. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many years worth of herbs I've got put up because I just, I dry them and then I just either vacuum seal them or I put them in jars. Um, so, and if I get to where, say something like onion powder, if I'm getting low on that and I don't have what I need, you know, the, enough onions to make my own onion powder. I'll go ahead and buy it in bulk and it'll last me forever. But everything else from flour to uh, sugar to oats to all my wheat berries, all my wheat berries that I mill to make different breads and my breads and stuff like that. Now, I have wheat berries that have never been opened that I keep back for in case time's really got, you know, hard. Uh, we did take the hogs to the processor, so I'll have lard pretty soon that I'll have to render down because I, we've been without fresh lard for a while because <clears throat> we didn't have any hogs to take off at that time. At this point, we don't have any more hogs right now. Um, they were either sold or went to the processor, and that's why we raised them to eat. We didn't raise them as, as a hobby or, or pets. And that's just part of homesteading. That's that's just part of being sustainable. Um, so right now, the only animals we got right now, besides the squirrels and the skunks and the coons and armadillos and the deer, um, and we we evidently we've got a few bears coming through here too. But they've not caused any issues. But we've got pictures of them, different areas around us. Um, chickens that's all we've got on our homestead right now and uh, the price of feed is going through the roof and uh, so sometimes you need to put your pencil to it to see if it's um, if you've got a local farm or a process in place that you can buy you can buy uh, good meat online too from so many American farms here in the United States that ship you really good meat because I have ordered it before anywhere from beef to pork to chicken and uh, right now <clears throat> I don't have any chickens to process and really I haven't since my son and daughter-in-law and we would get together and process chickens uh, since they moved we haven't processed any so I've been ordering chicken it's a place here in Arkansas and they send it to you online and it's always still frozen when I get it very good chicken uh, so there's places online, but uh, the feed has gotten so high that uh, you need to put a pencil to it to see if it's feasible to 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 feed something out, or to maybe find a, a local farmer, or like I said online. Uh, your online is going to be higher, of course, but most of it that I have tried 
Um, I haven't done any reviews on it except maybe back in when I first started. I think I done Porter Road or Butcher Box or something, and they all have really good meat. Um, we spend a lot of money feeding these hogs out, a lot of money, <laughs> and we know what they've been fed, and uh, been, and we know they were taken care of. But like I said, we have local farms that we know the farmers and how they take care of their animals. So we're not afraid to buy their meat at all. <clears throat> um, Danny is a meat and potato man, but we don't have to have meat every night either. So beans and potatoes and cornbread. I mean, how can you get any better? Anyways, I need to be getting off here because I'm not getting nothing done. <laughs> And I've got so much to do. But I wanted to get on here with y'all because I know y'all think we've just left and we haven't. Um, but we'll be back pretty soon with stuff on. I'm hoping maybe Friday I'll have a video uploaded too. I'm not sure if it'll be a recipe or canning or who knows. Like I said, the garden stuff. It's just not very pretty out there right now, y'all. With all this heat and... I do, my zinnias are beautiful, of course, y'all seen them, but uh, the gardens just are not that pretty right now. They're just suffering so bad. I mean, even though we're still getting tomatoes and stuff, oh, everything just, bless their hearts. The plants are suffering. <laughs> and if you go out there very long, you'll suffer too. We have gotten so used to air conditioning and because um, used to, you know, like I said, we didn't have air conditioning. So we didn't have that luxury for sure. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna get off here and, and try to get caught up. I think Mr. Brown's coming in at noon. I'm gonna have him some lunch cooked and try to have some more done here. When he comes in, he tries to help me too because there's a lot of stuff I can't do by myself to get done what's the uh, what we've had going on that I want to show y'all really bad. But uh, anyways, y'all have a, a good week. Hopefully I'll be back by Friday. Y'all stay safe. Stay cool any way that you can. Uh, if you need prayers or you need somebody just to, to say they love you, we're here. Comment below. Talk to us. Whatever it takes. We love y'all. Most of all, God loves you, and he's going to take care of you. Everything happens on God's time, not ours. Just remember that. Bye, everybody.